In this week's episode, a visionary young leader who wants students to approach maths and science with a positive attitude. But first, from a squatter camp to a leading academic. He was born in a squatter camp in Mpumalanga. When the apartheid government became ruthless, Piti Kanduli couldn't fold his arms and watch others fighting for him. After spending three decades in exile, a highly educated Professor Nduli came back to South Africa to help rebuild a country he dearly loves. You, your faces of today, tomorrow, and the day. Oh. He's a heavyweight in subjects relating to South Africa's heritage. This is Professor Piti Kanduli. Apart from being a leading academic, he's a talented artist. In order to relieve my old kind of a childhood, the sculptures that I make are made out of found objects. They are made out of corrugated iron as blankets, uh, out of hose, out of uh, you know, engine parts of, of, of cars, discarded bones that the dogs are uh, no longer actually interested in. It's not only his creations that inspire South Africans so much. Throughout his life, Professor Nduli overcame suffering that could have defeated most people. I grew up in a place called uh, Emalakleni, Blesbok, Masageni, which was uh, a squatter in a camp. The, under the small fumes of uh, you know, cold. I'm one of uh, you know, nine you know, children, and we lived in a four-roomed house, and all of us, the seven boys, in one room on a bed that looked like a boat. Raised by an unemployed mother and a father who was a priest, life was an endless struggle. And then whoever wakes up in the morning is the one who's going to catch yesterday's uh, uh, you know, remains. Uh, Am I yesterday's? And then uh, on Sundays, whoever wakes up in the morning will walk away with the shoes of someone because we'll be out there in order to go and impress uh, uh, you know, you know, the people. Pitika became politically conscious in his student days. He joined the liberation struggle in the then Eastern Transvaal. But his membership of the Pan-Africanist Congress in particular landed him in jail in the late 1950s. A daring Pitika, however, escaped from custody and fled to Swaziland. When he became part of a group that organized a march against apartheid in exile, he was again incarcerated. This time, he was sent to a death cell. It was absolutely kind of horrible. You are in a cell, tiny little cell. There's no running water, there's a bucket where you can empty yourself. And if you empty yourself, you'll smell the whole night. Uh, and we are reminded by these orders that the people are in the cell in which you are, uh, 17 people were hung in the past six years. A year in solitary confinement, and then Pitika was released. In later years, he was lucky to get a scholarship to study in America. Pitika spent the next 32 years away from his loved ones, traveling between Swaziland, England and America. During this time, he obtained several qualifications, including a master's degree in industrial sociology. When South Africa's political situation stabilized in the 90s, Pitika finally returned home. Coming back from uh, 
uh, you know, lecturing in universities in London. I ended up for one year at VETS. And the uh, VETS became was too white for me. And then I went down to Devon to the University of Devon, Westville, where the majority of the students were black and absolutely poor. Now an experienced academic, Professor Nduli contributes to South Africa's higher education and traditional affairs. And since then, uh, I've sat as a, 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 a chair in the Ministerial Advisory uh, you know, Committee for Science and Technology or the Indigenous Dollar Systems. Uh, I've set up the task team for the development of the Indigenous uh, Knowledge uh, you know, Systems. Uh, I've sat for five years on a commission on uh, traditional leadership disputes and claims, looking at all traditional Bukosi uh, uh, in all of the countries, India, and making. Where was that freedom? The mountains of hope. Where were they? But it's his passion for the spoken word that helps him connect with young people. We had formed actually an artist uh, organization called Voice of Voice of South African Artists in order to help uh, the younger artists that are still coming in to confront the odds that are, uh, that are before them. A man born into a life of hopelessness, forced to spend decades away from home, now an icon of courage and possibility. If you look what he's achieved within the arts as a, as a, as a practitioner, as a lecturer, as, a, as an artist, you know, because I myself produce his work. Um, and then to see a person making commentary on your work of Piti Kaskali, it, it, it can give you nothing else but uh, courage within the work that you do. I, I read some of his, po uh, his poetry, then I just, I'll come, not really depict it as it is, but then uh, through the inspiration of those words, you know, uh, I think when I get to the studio, I come with a clear mind and a clear conscience of uh, not really working towards what he said, but then I draw a lot of inspiration from him. Each and every challenge, each and every order that actually stands uh, in front of you, somebody has conquered it before. And you are not uh, so weak that you are not like other people that you can. Each and every challenge is going to be over, uh, has to be overcome. Fascinating stuff. We salute you, Professor Piti Kanduli, for all your efforts. Drop us an email and let us know what you think. Against all odds at enca.com. You can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, for Benedict Mashile, Nelson Mandela Day doesn't have to come once a year. Thank you.